Okay, so this is a little bit of help if you need help with the assignment. That's the part one of your third project. Um, this program right here comes from Arrays of Random Numbers Part 1 and Arrays of Random Numbers Part 2 video. So I'd watch those first if you are not sure what's going on here. Um, I'm going to change these array values back to 100. Again, note, if I try to play right now when I'm initializing a thousand random numbers, but I only have arrays that hold a hundred numbers, I'm going to get an array out of bounds exception. Um, the easiest way, just sometimes you'll get a spinning beach ball of death, just hit the stop button um, if you end up with a spinning beach ball. Um, but you want to make sure that you're only initializing the same number of um, variables as the array can hold. I mean in a hundreds. Right now these are just a hundred dots. The idea for the um, part one is you're going to make, instead of 100, it doesn't have to be 100, it could be 50, it could be 200, uh, a large number. Instead of just circles, we're going to make um, a character for a game. And in the game, we are going to um, be trying to quote unquote catch them by clicking on them. So we're going to click on compound shapes um, and send them off screen and keep score of how many we've clicked on. So I'm going to need to make a method that I'm going to use so I can make a, a whole bunch, let's say 100, of the same character. We want to think again about our Quaker values. We're catching things. We don't want to be murdering anything. Um, I'm asking you to stay away from people. Um, but if you want to, um, you should make a new compound shape, something you haven't done before. I'm recommending aliens or monsters. So I made a monster. Um, so I'm going to make a new method, void monster. And I'm going to have to take in past parameters here. But just to make sure I know what it looks like and that it looks the way I want it to, I'm not going to, I'll sub in the uh, parameters later. So right now, let me do, let's say, no stroke. Um, and I'm going to do um, fill. And then an ellipse. I'll just do a static value now. Again, I'm going to put the uh, variables in later. Um, I'll make them smaller than that, 30 by 30. And then let's do just really quickly ellipse at um, 280, 280, 10 by 10, and ellipse at I want this at 240, 240, and 260, 240, 10 by 10. And then I've got to call the monster function so I can see it. Just anywhere and draw. And there he is. Maybe I should comment this out first so you can see. Um, oh, this was supposed to be 240. Anyway. Your monsters, I'm sure, will be much more lovely. Yes, okay, so there's my monster. Looking great. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, have it accept some past parameters for the location. I don't want to say X and Y. I mean, I could. It would work if I said X and Y, but it's going to be very confusing. We've got an array called X and Y and local variables called X and Y. So I'm going to say MX for monster X and float MY for monster Y. And I'm going to sub MX in here and MY here. So 240, if MX is 250, 240 is MX minus 10. MX minus 10. MX plus 10. MX minus 10. OK. So now I need some past parameters. So now if I call monster at 100, 100, I can make one monster. But instead of doing that, you should call your monster function in here. But the trick is, what do you put in now as parameters if you want 100 monsters? That gets you pretty close. You just need to figure out what it is, that you're, what variables you're going to pass in to um, flow MX and flow MY so you can have 100 monsters based all over the screen.